Hello everybody and welcome back to Insider's Guide. Today, we're discussing the largest ski area in the world, Les Trois Vallées. There's so much to explore that we've got five extra long parts of this Insider's Guide. This one, with background information you'll want to know about Les Trois Vallées in general, and one apiece for each of the four major areas in Les Trois Vallées. I know I'm going to forget some things, so I'm not even going to consider calling this Insider's Guide comprehensive, but I'm darn well going to do my best to cover everything. We've got a lot to go through. So let's begin, an Insider's Guide to Ski Resorts, edition Les Trois Vallées. While there are technically seven ski resorts in Les Trois Vallées, they can be sorted into four main areas. On the left here is Courchevel, all of this, and La Tanya, just this little bit here. That's the first area. The second, Maribel, encompasses the entire middle valley. The Belleville Valley on the right here can be split into an upper and lower section. The lower section has Saint-Martin de Belleville, which is this little area here, and Les Menuis, which is all of this in the Pointe de la Masse. The upper part of the valley encompasses val which is all of this, and Aurel, which is the unofficial fourth valley on the back side of val Valterrand val is the highest elevation ski resort in Europe. As such, it always has the best snow conditions and the longest ski season in Les Trois Vallées. However, it is considered by many to also be the busiest ski resort in Europe, with a large, bustling village that has something for everyone. val is great for all skill levels and offers plenty of activities for non-skiing, along with a large nightlife scene. If you're going in December or April, you'll want to stay in val as it is the most likely to have decent snow conditions in the early and late season. Lift lines can get pretty long during the busy periods, and are certainly the longest in Trois-Vallées at any given time. Aurel is a smaller town in the valley below, with a direct access to the slopes via the extremely long Aurel gondola. Aurel is one of the best villages to get away from the large tourist crowds of the mountain villages. Les Menuises' snow conditions are much less consistent than those in val As a whole, the town of Les Menuis is considered to be pretty ugly, so I try to avoid staying in Les Menuis. However, Les Menuis has many fewer crowds than val It still tends to be busier than Maribel and Courchevel, however. Saint-Martin de Belleville has arguably the most variable snow conditions. It is a much smaller village than Les Menuis and val and as such is much quieter. If the snow on the slopes is good, Saint-Martin is one of my favorite villages to stay in. Maribel is a favorite of foreign tourists, as it is conveniently situated in the middle valley, with easy access to all of the other ski resorts. At the bottom of the valley is the town of bride le bain Similarly to Aurel, it is connected via a gondola. However, I much prefer to stay on the slopes in the charming town of maribel Sante, spread throughout the forest. maribel Monterey, the highest elevation of the villages in the Maribel Valley, is the best village to stay in if you plan on skiing several days in the other resorts, as it has the easiest connections to the other valleys. Between bride le bain and maribel Sante is an area called Les Alus. Les Alus has a lot of standalone chalets that have access to the slopes via the mid-stations of the gondola that comes from bride le bain Courchevel tends to have the second best snow conditions in the trois Vallées. It tends to have some of the shortest lift lines in trois Vallées. However, the caveat is that Courchevel is the most expensive ski resort in the world. It has several villages, with the most expensive one being Courchevel 1850, a beautiful town in the forest. Le Pra, Courchevel 1550, and Courchevel 1650 are also extremely nice resorts that are less busy than 1850. They are all lower elevation, so they don't have as good of snow conditions at their base areas. La Tanya, technically a separate ski area, is another really nice resort in the forest. It does, however, have pretty variable snow conditions especially when compared to next-door Courchevel and Maribel. Le Trois Vallées has very good public transit, as is typical of anywhere in Europe. All of the resorts have bus systems that you can find more about online or at the local tourist office. To get to the resorts, a lot of people take the train. There is a TGV station in Moutier, which is only a half hour away from Maribel, Courchevel, and Les Menuis, and an hour from val you can arrange for a taxi to take you to your lodging from the station. The trains make it easy to extend your vacation to include a few days in cities such as Lyon, Paris, or even London. 
The closest airports with service from major carriers are Geneva, Switzerland, and Lyon, France, both two to two and a half hour drive away. Turin, Italy, is a three to three and a half hour drive. Something that stops a lot of people from traveling overseas to ski is the language. Obviously, since Le Trois-Vallées is in France, French is the primary language spoken. However, English is relatively common in Le Trois-Vallées, seeming just as common as French from time to time. English is spoken by the large number of Brits that visit Le Trois-Vallées, and is also used as a common language for some people with other first languages. Most restaurants and shops will speak enough English to get by. I would still highly recommend trying to learn at least a little bit of French, but you can get by without being a fluent French speaker in Le Trois-Vallées. Now, with all that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the actual skiing experience. Le Trois-Vallées has a very sophisticated and modern lift system, with dozens of detachable gondolas and chairlifts. However, Le Trois-Vallées can get pretty busy, and on those few busy times, lift lines can get quite large. In these scenarios, surface lifts can be quite nice alternates. Drag lifts, such as Source and Rocher de l'Ombre here in Courchevel, can get you to the same piece as the gondolas and chairlifts, without the same long lines. A few gondolas, namely Pas du Lac and Solier Express in Maribel and Bruyère in Les Minuits, have these mid-stations. They can be nice in the early and late season to only lap the upper part of the mountain where the snow is better. However, on busy days, most every cabin will be filled at the base completely, so the mid-station line does not move particularly quickly. Typically, only one or two people can get in per cabin at the mid-station, compared to eight at the base, because the cabins are already sent up full from the base. As such, I don't recommend using mid-stations on gondolas unless it is only you or you and a partner. If you're in a large group or with family, just ski down to the base and get on the gondola from there. If you've watched the video comparing skiing in North America and Europe, you'll know that generally, the pistes are pretty crowded in Europe. However, the busiest areas on the slopes by far are the valley crossovers and the base areas. These large red arrows show the crossovers where you can leave one valley and ski down into another. This is the Trois-Vallées map, so you can see what is on both sides of each crossover. However, in parts B through E, we'll be using the maps of the individual ski resorts, which won't show what's on the other side of the crossovers. Something you'll see dotted through the trail maps are pistes called Boulevard and Traversé. These indicate that the piste is a road. However, contrary to roads in North America, the roads in Trois-Vallées aren't that flat and don't really require pushing. For the other parts of this insider's guide, know that if I say something is a road, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is flat, unless I explicitly say so. Le Trois-Vallées has two major busy periods, the few weeks following New Year's and the month of February. The following insider's guides will be explaining things for a normal week, not the two major busy periods. All right. Now that we've gone through the background information and set the precedent for the other parts of the Insider's Guide, we're going to go ahead and end this part A. Go watch parts B, C, D, and E after this. As always, please leave any questions down below. All my love, I'm out.